Jesus tells his disciples that whoever receives a child in his name receives not only the child, but Christ himself. Since we are all children of God, Jesus is telling us to love everyone. Doing this brings us closer to God, the source of all love. Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commandments of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading is taken from a type of lib literature called wisdom literature. In fact, it's even called from the Book of Wisdom. Wisdom literature was written about a hundred years before the birth of Christ. The uh, second reading is from the letter of James, who wrote his letter about 40 years after Christ's death. But they both use kind of the same uh, form. In wisdom literature, it comes out of uh, we think it comes out of uh, Alexandria in Egypt in the first century where there was a large Jewish community but the Jews as all in Alexandria spoke Greek. It was a great center of learning and the Jews felt that they were persecuted by everyone else. They were held up for derision for trying to live their faith in the best way possible. They were also very concerned that their children were growing up without a real sense of, of their own history and of being involved in a larger community, just smaller households. And uh, so they wrote this literature to kind of support them. In our first reading uh, and in the Gospel of James, uh, things are outlined as black or white, good or bad, and you'll hear it. The first reading has, uh, it comes um, from the side of the bad. And it's, it's why good people feel put upon. Uh, and then in the letter of James, it's once again, it's all good or all bad. And James looks at something that's going on within the Christian community using that same style. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The wicked say, let us beset the just one, because he is obnoxious to us. He sets himself against our doings, reproaches us for transgressions of the law, and charges us with violations of our training. Let us see whether his words be true. Let us find out what will happen to him. For if the just one be the Son of God, God will defend him and deliver him from the hand of his foes. With revilement and torture, let us put the just one to the test, that we may have proof of his gentleness and try his patience. Let us condemn him to a shameful death, for according to his words, God will take care of him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm is number 85. 85. <laughs>
A reading from the letter of St. James. Beloved, where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder and every foul practice. But the wisdom from above is first of all pure, then peaceable, gentle, compliant, full of mercy and good fruits, without inconstancy or insincerity. And the fruit of the righteousness is sown in peace for those who cultivate peace. Where do the wars and where do the conflicts among you come from? Is it not from your passions that make war within your members? You covet, but do not possess. You kill and envy, but you cannot obtain. You fight and wage war. You do not possess because you do not ask. You do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. The word of the Lord. be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus and his disciples left there and began a journey through Galilee, but he did not wish anyone to know about it. He was teaching his disciples and telling them the Son of Man is to be handed over to men, and they will kill him. Three days after his death, the Son of Man will rise. But they did not understand what he was saying, and they were afraid to question him. They came to Capernaum, and once inside the house, he began to ask him, What are you arguing about on the way? But they remained silent. They had been discussing among themselves on the way who was greatest. And then he sat down. He called the twelve around him, and he said to them, If anyone wishes to be first, he shall be the last of all and the servant of all. Taking a child, he placed it in their midst. And putting his arms around it, he said to them, Whoever receives one child such as this in my name receives me. And whoever receives me 
receives not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Just last week in our Gospel, Jesus told Peter not to tempt him when Peter tried to tell Jesus that since he was the Christ, the Anointed One of God, he shouldn't have to suffer and die at the hands of the leaders of the time. In our Gospel today, Jesus again talks about how he would be handed over to be killed. And he doesn't say to the disciples that they will be the ones to do it. He just says that he will be handed over to be killed, but then he would rise again after three days. That the disciples didn't understand is not surprising, but they were even afraid to ask him or question him about it. Were they afraid to know what it all meant? Afraid to hear some terrifying details? Afraid of the implications his sufferings might have on their own lives? Jesus merely announces his fate. He doesn't describe it. He doesn't explain it. It's kind of left hanging. hanging. Now, this wasn't just a short thing. In last week's reading, they had walked all around the borders of the lands of Israel. And they had come down one side of the Sea of Galilee. So it was a sev several days' journey that they had done that was talked about in last week's Gospel. In this week's Gospel, they start out at the southern end of the Sea of Galilee, almost the exact size as Lake Winnebago. And why don't we say that they uh, were starting around um, North Fond du Lac or Van Dyne, and they were walking all the way up the shoreline, discussing and, and talking with one another and arguing, all the way up to, why don't we say, Manasseh. It was a good long walk. It took a while. When the disciples, when Jesus was talking about his own sense of vulnerability at knowing things were coming down upon him for the way he was preaching and the things that he was doing, and he knew that the powers that were at the time were being amassed against him and his feeling of being vulnerable the disciples were busy talking about who was strongest, who was the smartest, who was the one that Jesus loved the most, who was the holiest, who was the biggest, who was the one that could preach the best. You know, they were arguing about all kinds of things just the way we do when we try to change the subject when we hear something difficult and don't want to attend to it. Jesus is talking about his own sense of coming death. And they won't have anything to do with it. I think that uh, when Jesus took a child and placed the child in their midst, I'm going to borrow your daughter. Can, can, can you come with me here? Okay. Oh, dear. There you go. Look at all these people around here, huh? He took a little child and placed them in their midst. Now, little children, yeah, little children had no legal status at that time. Women had no legal status at that time. You had to be 12 years old. Ooh. Do we have your leg folded up there? Anyone under the age of 12 had no legal status and uh, no social status. 
And so when Jesus took a child like this, he was, he was taking a nobody. Yeah, you recognize that one face there, don't you, huh? And uh, he was saying, you have to be like this little child. You have to be vulnerable. You have to be uh, not in control of your life. Uh, if, she <laughs> if she likes stewed carrots and gets creamed beans instead, no matter what she says, she's getting creamed beans, right? <laughs> it's your decision, not hers. You know, if she wants to go outside but mom is busy, uh-uh, ain't gonna happen. That sense of vulnerability, that sense of not being in control, is exactly what Jesus was pointing to as he took a child and said, you know, this is the way you have to be. This is the way you must look at society. Now, we have to do the same thing as we look at ourselves. You know, today is the uh, day after the one month anniversary of Father Vic's death. And I know for me, his death struck me as, as I was dealing with uh, the shock. But I also had to deal with my own vulnerability. I remember deciding not to ride my motorcycle for a few days afterwards because uh, I didn't uh, look all that carefully going through intersections. I uh, sometimes thought of other things as I would be driving. And I didn't like that feeling of vulnerability, so I backed off from it by taking that symbol and putting it aside as, as I looked at the immensity of uh, the loss of Father Vic. Jesus says, vulnerability is part of life. And whoever receives someone of no status, who has no control, who has no way to pay you back, uh, we receive him. And not only do we receive him, but we receive the one who sent him. When the disciples were arguing I think it kind of connects with our second reading, this reading from the book of James. The conflict within the Christian community. Although confronted by persecution during those years, the conflict, according to James, is not caused by outside forces. He says that the Christians have no one to blame but themselves for the lack of harmony in their community and in their personal lives. The evil influence that take hold of individuals exert their influence over others. The jealousy and ambitions that grip the heart of one spill over into the lives of many. There is no peace because they do not choose a path that leads to peace. And the path they do choose leads to frustration and more anger and a deeper sense of isolation. And so jo James lays bare the frustration or pointlessness of what they have chosen. What they covet, status, power, safety, control. What we covet, power, status, safety, and control, they cannot, we cannot possess. We cannot possess it. They ask, but they do not receive. Even the use of force cannot guarantee success because they have chosen the wrong, we have chosen the wrong path. 
What is required of them is a complete turnabout, a change of heart, a reversal of lifestyle in order to experience the peace they desire. They must allow themselves to be vulnerable, to be powerless. And precisely there is where our first reading says they will encounter, we will encounter true wisdom. The course of righteousness, the way of peace. Sometime in the first 400 years of Christianity, we shifted from having adult baptisms to having infant baptisms. And it changed the way we look at this sacrament. I think it's important that we celebrate baptisms during a Sunday gathering and prayer, during our Sunday Mass, because it it touches us with our own sense of vulnerability, that sense of that overwhelming task at times that parents feel of that total dependence of their children on them, keeping poisonous cleaning substances on the upper shelves and glass objects away from the lower ones to make sure that they have safe places to play and somebody's watching over them. These are the things that we are called upon to do as a Christian community. We just had a session for those preparing for the sacrament of the Eucharist preparing for the sacrament of reconciliation. And we see in them a growing sense of of personhood that hasn't quite arrived yet, that we still need to help. At the beginning of this celebration, I asked if you really understood what you were undertaking. And maybe you do and maybe you don't, but the question goes to the rest of us as well. Do we really understand what we are undertaking as we baptize these children. These children are calling us back to our own sense of vulnerability, our own sense of the way we need to relate to God as a child to its parent, looking to God for what we need, looking to God for what we want, looking to God even for permission, can I do it? Is it okay? Looking like she did for a face that she recognized in the crowd, That's us. And that's what Jesus was saying about his own sense of vulnerability. You know, as we try to uh, uh, create a sense of peace, it's always the strong one that has to take the steps back. It's almost always the strong one that has to become more vulnerable even than the weak one in any peace process. And if we're too proud to do it, we will never find that peace. And these children show us how. And uh, so without further ado, I ask you all please to stand and recite with me our baptismal (laughs) statement of faith and our promises. Do you reject Satan and all his empty promises? and all his empty works. Do Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, was buried, who rose again on the third day and now sits at the right hand of the Father? Do Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith, the faith that we are proud to profess this sense of our own vulnerability before the immensity of this God who saves us. Let us make our petitions before the Lord. We turn to God, our helper, 
the Lord who sustains our life, who will hear us and hearken to the words of our prayer. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. That all members of the church, journeying on the way of discipleship, may imitate Jesus, not seeking to be first, but becoming last of all and servants of all, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace throughout the world, for peace among nations, within communities and families, for peace in our hearts, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are contemplating abortion may open their hearts to know that God has placed a precious life in their keeping, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the children of this community and those who serve and nurture them in Christ's name may teach all of us how to welcome Christ in others with simplicity of heart, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That this Sunday, as our fellow parishioners gather together with our sister parish in Chicago, Our Lady, Gate of Heaven, their prayers and fellowship are a sign of Christ's love, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially for George Johannes, who died this past week, and for those remembered at this Mass, Barb Flood, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We also, on this first month anniversary, remember the repose of, soul, uh, of the soul of Father Vic Capriolo. May he rest in peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all our own personal petitions, we pray. Merciful Father, we ask that you hear our prayers and grant what you know is best to us. We make our prayer through our, your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat>
Pray then, sisters and brothers all, that these gifts that we are, these gifts that we offer, may be acceptable to God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at our hands, for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all the church. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what we profess with devotion and faith may be ours through these heavenly mysteries, we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. It is our duty and always our salvation to give you thanks, Father most holy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, your word, through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with all the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim Indeed, holy, O Lord, you are the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we offer, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took the bread and, giving you thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, after supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving you thanks, he offered the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you and for the many so that sins may be forgiven whenever you do this. Do it in memory of me. The mystery of faith. So as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, the bread of life, the chalice of eternal blessing, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Benedict, our Pope, Jerome, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember Grace Elizabeth and Megan Marie who have entered our community and now in a very real way rely upon our teaching, our example, our words, our care, our protection, that they may grow to be fruitful members of your body and teach us how you wish us to live. <coughs> Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and with them may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At our Savior's command and formed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the 
throughout the Mass, we have been giving these newly baptized uh, different signs of their relationship to the community. We began by marking them with the sign of the cross, officially giving them that sign as part of their identity. And then as I asked you the questions about our faith. Do you believe in God? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? We shared with them for the first time officially our faith. And then now we just shared with them the Our Father, the sign, the prayer of community as brothers and sisters in the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of the church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold the one who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are we, he invites us not only to this meal, but to his eternal banquet of the Lamb in heaven. Lord, I am not worthy that you should, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Elizabeth and Nicole, mother and godmother, uh, Samantha and Jenny, mother and godmother, would you two please stand? God the Father, through his Son, the Virgin Mary's child, has brought joy to all Christian mothers as they see the hope of eternal life shine on in their children, and may he bless you, the mother 
and godmother of these two children. As you now thank God for the gift of their children, may you be one with thanking your children forever in heaven. In Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Would Adam and Ben, Kevin and Eric, please join your wives and godmothers or godpartners or whatever. <laughs> God is the giver of all life, both human and divine. May he bless you, the fathers of these newly baptized children. With your wives, you will be the first teachers of your children in the ways of faith, and may you also be the best of their teachers, bearing witness to the faith by what they say and do, and do in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please rise. And for ourselves, too, we pray. By God's gift through water and the Holy Spirit, we are all reborn to everlasting life. In his goodness, may he continue to pour out his blessings upon all here present. For we are indeed his sons and daughters, brothers and sisters in the Lord. May he make us always, wherever we may be, faithful members of his holy people. May he send his peace upon all who are gathered here, in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Our celebration here has ended. I heard you say, all done. <laughs> Let us go forth and spread the news to the world. Thanks be to God. Our closing song is number 718. We are called 718. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm.